while cereal is not just something we eat for breakfast, it's a part of the American pop culture. Cereal boxes can be very nostalgic for a lot of people. And for collectors, they can mean big money. Rob and Susanna Versandi from Toys Around the Clock in St. Petersburg join us now with uh, some of their collection. Thanks. Why did you start collecting cereal boxes? Well, this is sort of an adjunct to our uh, vintage toy uh, business. We discovered that in selling uh, uh, cereal premiums and things of that nature, a lot of the collectors would ask us, do we have any boxes? And at the time that this happened, we didn't have too many. But as we go through life here, we discover that there are sources for these things. Admittedly, they're uh, not that they're readily available, but occasionally when we see a good box, we'll buy it and keep it in our uh, inventory. Oh, they must oh, wow. be hard to find. Do they have cereal in them? <laughs> One or two do. Oh, <laughs> really? I would not advise breakfast with anything you find in your box, however. Oh, well, take yeah, us through yeah, your collection now. Closed. Well, this is a variety pack from the early 50s, and what made that so um, popular, not only did you get a variety of cereals, but when you finish with the box, you had a little town that you could play Aww. with. Uh, it had, uh, if you had cars or little people or something like that, you'd have a town ready to, to oh, be used as a toy. I thought that these small boxes, were that was more of a modern invention, because now we like to have everything we can just grab and go, but they've been yeah. doing this for decades. Quite a bit, yeah. Pretty cool. That yeah. looks like yeah. fun. It is. It really is. Very now, I'm reading on the next Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Little Tommy Till Tittlemouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Little Tommy Tittlemouse Rice Krispies? I guess before they started doing premiums, they decorated the boxes with little uh, fairy tales and stories yeah, that's and a things. Story. Yeah. yeah, I remember And uh, that. that box is from 1937. It's probably the oldest one in our collection. Wow. And it's hard to find them in that kind of condition. It, Very I mean, good it's uh, amazing, just amazing. That's older than I am, and nobody threw it out yet. <laughs> I, I'm just amazed. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, tell me about the Cheerios. Well, that's from General Mills, and General Mills was a big sponsor of a lot of the radio and television shows uh, for children. This one happens to feature the Lone Ranger, and on the back of this particular box is a piece of the Lone Ranger town. Now, there must have been about, I don't know, 50 or 60 boxes with different buildings on it that you had to cut out and cre create the town. And then by sending in a box top and 10 cents, you got the actual flat that you put the buildings on. Oh, how so fun. you had a Lone Ranger town once the, all the pieces were Oh, uh, I love to, that. And, and then tell me what comes next. I remember Hot Ralston. I do. Oh, wow. You're one of the few people who do. Well, <laughs> most people my age are dead, so go ahead. Uh, this particular box uh, features Tom Mix, which nobody probably remembers. Tom Mix? Yeah. Oh, yes, I do. Good I have a crush you. on him. Good for you. Um, he was a popular cowboy star of the yes. 30s and 40s, and uh, he was tied in with the Ralston people and uh, did a radio show. And uh, there was a Ralston Riders where you sent away and you became one of his uh, saddle pals. Um, they sold a ton of merchandise um, w with the uh, Ralston uh, products uh, wow. featuring him. And uh, I mean, you can still get some of those products today. Well, it wow. used to be such a big deal to send away for all these right. things, yes. too. You know, we didn't have Amazon. You know, my dad <laughs> said he remembers saving the tops and yes. the, to mail away. And even, you know, 30 years ago when yeah. I was doing it. I remember that. This I remember funny that so I thought well. This was all new. Not, uh, right. you know, didn't think that it went back to the 30s. It's well, amazing. my mother made the mistake of taking me shopping with her, so the cereals that entered into our home usually had something in the box. Had or absolutely. Or, or yes. I needed the box top to send away for something. And I would choke down a box I didn't like just, <laughs> just to, to get, get the box thing. top or the thing inside. Well, I read the backs of the boxes because we weren't allowed to read books at the table. There you go. So I read a lot of cereal boxes. Tell us about <laughs> some of the others down there. Okay. Well, this is a local uh, cornflakes uh, brand. That local? I, yeah, uh, really? in Chicago. I've never seen it anywhere uh, other than an antique store. So I don't know um, too much about this one. But the one next to it, this Rice Krispies box is from the 50s. And uh, Rice Krispies uh, sponsored uh, the Howdy Doody That's Puppet Howdy Show. Doody. Yeah. Yes. Right, right. Can we turn it around so they can actually see the... Yeah. Well, on, the on the back of the box, of course, yes. is a mask, which was to be cut out and used by the, the kids. Oh, and that particular so mask is um, um, Dilly Dally. Right. Oh, right. That is cute. Mm -hmm. So we were never buying the cereal just to eat the cereal. <laughs> yeah. We were always going for something else. Right. Of well, course. The All next, of the treats. The next one over, Kix, uh, is a really not too terrific cereal. And the only reason <laughs> my mother bought it for me was because on the back of that, like you got a little plane that you cut out and assembled. 
Oh. Oh, yeah. And I think we must have had about six or seven kicks boxes sitting That's in our pantry great. with the backs off. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Exactly. And the bags hanging out. Well. Right. Tell us about some of the others. This brings back great memories. Well, the next one over, um, the next two actually are um, Quaker puffed wheat boxes. Um, they sponsored um, Sergeant Preston. And uh, almost all their merchandising was related to the Sergeant Preston show. Um, you could get totems, you could get um, all kinds of goodies if you took the box top off and sent it in with 10 cents. Um, I wasn't a fan of that cereal either. We, very few Quaker puffed wheat boxes ended up at our house. Um, the next one is Grape Nuts, and that's a repro box. That was done some years ago. Oh, wow. Some years ago. But um, uh, that's how it looked in the 30s and they reproduced the box just maybe about 10 years ago. Wow. Um, that required an awful lot of hot milk to make it edible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, I remember being like tortured with those. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly right. I was tortured with those. Now we're getting closer to the things that down there that look pretty modern. Well, yeah, the 80s right. kids are going to yeah. remember Count I remember. Chocula. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Oh, this is so much fun. You can see more of his collection if you go to the Vintage Collections by Toys Around the Clock. Their website, Toys Around the Clock, has some great collections that you'll want to see on there. Bring back wonderful memories. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Next, Cutting Loose is going to tell us how to curl our hair.